picking up from where we left off, the next book that I read was Some 41 Tales from the Afterlives by David Eagleman. As the title suggests, it is a collection of short stories exploring this idea of life after death and through that it explores religion and the idea of God or a lack of a God and it's just all philosophical and wonderful. Some of the stories are quiet and simple, some are completely nuts, other ones are quite terrifying to consider actually. It has a great balance of philosophy and religion and just general whimsy. I can definitely recommend it. Then we're up to what the 13th book now. This is There But For The by Ali Smith. This is my second Ali Smith novel and it didn't quite live up to How To Be Both but it was excellent nonetheless. This is much more farcical than How To Be Both and it's a satire really. It starts out with a man at a dinner party who goes upstairs and locks himself in one of the bedrooms and refuses to come out. It's kind of about the aftermath of that event. Told from multiple perspectives you get quite a lot of different people and different lives. This is one where you should definitely ignore the Goodreads rating because it's much better than that would suggest. I read two memoirs in June and this is one of them. This was My Salinger Year by Joanna Rakoff. Rakoff is now a fiction author but before that she worked at a literary agency. So that's what this book is and she finds out maybe a little later than she should that this agency represents J.D. Salinger. So it's especially about the relationship with the fan mail that comes in for Salinger because he famously was quite reclusive and didn't reply to fan mail. And in this quite roundabout way she begins to engage with his literature. So in that sense it's really about the transformative power of words and of books. If you're a Salinger fan then I think you'll probably probably really enjoy this. But if you're just interested in the way that literature impacts our lives and are interested in how it's impacted other people's lives, then you'll probably enjoy this too. Alright, then we have another collection of short stories. This is Don't Try This at Home by Angela Redman. This is one of these beautiful editions by And Other Stories. They all have this circular design somewhere on the cover and then they have beautiful patterns and they have really nice layouts and typography so um, yeah I'm a big fan of these books. Now I was hoping that this collection would be a bit like A Guide to Being Born but sadly it didn't quite live up to that for me. The first story was definitely my favourite. I think it's always a bit of a shame in a collection of short stories when you absolutely love the first story and then none of them quite do it for you after that. The first story is all about this woman who cuts her boyfriend in half and then in half again and then in half again and so she has all these different versions of her boyfriend running around doing different things it starts to get a bit out of hand and I feel like there could have been a whole novella with that and the different lives of these of these boyfriends. The magical realism in here is really quirky and interesting so in that sense it is similar to A Guide to Being Born. There are some stories towards the end that I quite liked as well. Then we have another collection of short stories this was Kissing the Witch by Emma Donoghue. This is such a great collection and if you like fairy tale retellings then you will love this. I picked this up because Kirsty Logan who wrote The Grace Keepers said that it was one of her most influential books. So these are fairy tales but with a feminist twist. They're also stacked one after the other so at the end of one story you'll have one character asking another character well how did you become who you are and then we go into their story. The idea that the wicked witch in one story is the heroine in the other is something that really appeals to me. There are lots of these stories and your favourite fairy tale is probably in there. There's a retelling of The Little Mermaid which is my particular favourite. Next we have a book that Jen told me I had to read. This is The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. I didn't know much about Amanda Palmer before I started reading this. I knew that she was Neil Gaiman's wife and that she spends a lot of time on Twitter but that was about it. This was such an inspiring memoir. It's sort of about making yourself vulnerable and the benefits that that can bring. It's about human connection, about street performance, art, music, crowd surfing and crowdfunding. It's amazing and inspiring and beautiful and Amanda Palmer reads it herself on the audiobook so I'd recommend it for that reason and 
there are snippets of her music in there too, so it's a bit of a treat. It's certainly a book that will inspire you to be a better human. Another book that will probably inspire you to be a better human is A Year of Marvelous Ways by Sarah Winman. Now I heard Sarah Winman speak at an event at Dulwich Books and she was in conversation with Patrick Gale, whose book A Place Called Winter I mentioned in the first part of this wrap up. And she did a reading from this book and I was just completely entranced and desperate to read it. <laughs> she's a fantastic speaker so I really wanted to pick this up in audiobook form because I knew that she was the narrator. So this is a whimsical and kind of allegorical tale and it's about a man called Drake who has just finished his time in World War II and about a woman called Marvelous. So these two unlikely characters find each other and become friends and they sort of help each other rebuild their lives and they do that through storytelling. This book is quite quaint in some ways but it's just lovely and inspiring. It's about love and compassion and friendship and yeah I, I really enjoyed it. Then we have a book that I'm not quite sure how to review and this is Quiet London by Siobhan Wall and the reason I'm not quite sure how to review this is because I haven't really used it as a guidebook yet. I've read it cover to cover and there are lots of places that I want to visit here but I've only been to a few of them mostly bookshops. But I am very fascinated to go out and explore London with this as my guide because this is all about places that are quiet and away from the crowds because I like peace and quiet and I don't like crowds. So I think I've given this three stars on Goodreads but I might change that depending on my experience out in the wider world. And then I read another book that was a recommendation from Jen Campbell. As has been the case with everything she's recommended, it was marvellous. This was The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. It's about a missionary who is sent to a foreign planet to spread the word of God. I was a bit worried that this was going to be a preachy sort of novel and that's why I'd avoided it in the past but that was certainly not the case. I like books that explore the idea of religion, but I don't like books that tell me explicitly what to think. So Jen said it reminded her of the part in Philip Pullman's The Amber Spyglass, where Mary Malone encounters these strange creatures and has to learn to communicate with them. I completely understand that comparison. It's really about human connection. Faber does this by creating absences of connection and then rebuilding them in the least likely of places. And I think that's what makes this book so compelling. Okay, so those were all the books that I read for the first time this month. I'm quickly going to go over my rereads of the month. As you'll probably know, this is not something I do a lot of, but I've been wanting to do a bit more rereading because there are so many books that I love so much. The first one, I'm not actually sure if I finished to the end, completed, 100% the first time round. It is The Rehearsal by Eleanor Catton. She just, she just writes so well. This book is set at an all-girls school. It centers around a scandal between a teacher and a student. I just think she does an amazing job of capturing that time when you're just so confused about your identity and trying to build yourself an identity of sorts. You have all these insecurities and changes. I think she captures that atmosphere very, very well. If The Luminaries seems a bit daunting to you, maybe this would be a good place to start with her work. Finally, I reread Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. And this book just feels like coming home, maybe even more so than Harry Potter does to me. I read and reread this book so many times as a child. Now, coming back to them again, I just get so much more out of them. On one level they're children's books, but on another level they're really adult books. Having read and experienced so much more now, I really understand and appreciate the political side of things, the issues of class that come up, and of course the bigger religious picture. I'm continuing on with the reread of this trilogy, and it's just so nice and comfortable for a change to read something that you just know is wonderful. But anyway, those are all of the books that I read in June. I think I'm going to go and stick my feet in a cold bath or something. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.